now I'm going to Bukhara. Just left Nukus. This is how a Soviet first class looks like. Even though it's Soviet, it has designs of Uzbek designs here. Pretty cool. The cost is about 25 bucks to take a nine hour train ride from Nukus to Bukhara. So I'm at the cafe restaurant, just ordered the uh, lagman, which is uh, Uzbek food, some tea and a salad. When I traveled in uh, trains in Russia and in Uzbekistan, the, the restaurants usually don't have too much options. But uh, the lagman is bomb with some tea and then these beautiful views of the desert. I just found a shower inside this wagon. This is first class, but I've never seen a shower inside of a wagon, especially in this part of the world. It's not being used right now, but it's really premium. I mean, this is unbelievable. They also have these paintings here. Looks like a museum. Good morning from Bukhara, the Silk Road city. Got uh, greeted by this lovely breakfast. There was some eggs and some cheese and some jams and stuff and crepes. And sitting in this boutique hotel that is uh, designed like uh, Uzbek style. You can tell all these columns are carved out pretty beautiful place i want to show you my room that i'm staying at in bukhara <clears throat> it's a gorgeous uzbek designed room very authentic but here you can see the ceilings the logs were carved out as well very beautiful cozy it's about 30 dollars per night Modern bathroom, very nice. If you're in Bukhara, this is called Salon Inn. It's in the old town city center. We're walking in the old town of Bukhara. There's the Karavan Sarai. This is where like the selling and exchange of goods will happen this is caravan that where the people stayed like the merchants that would they would travel and sell their goods at the bazaars and here would be their place of staying and here would be the selling as there were merchants here during the silk road times there are still markets similar to this style, meaning they occupy the same places as they used to in the back several centuries ago. Today I'm going to explore the back streets of Bukhara. Let's, let's find something interesting that the guides won't show us usually. This is the mausoleum of a famous student then he became the scholar then the imam of bukhara and he was well respected and the pilgrims that came here when they didn't respect him and said hello and greet him they would fall off the course because most of the pilgrims would come by horse that's the legend the name of the scholar was turki jandi it's fun getting lost in these mazes this old town, uh, little side streets, these streets, these doors, look at this. Here you can see how the houses back in the day were built. They would use the 
wooden chips covered with mud and then the wooden logs would hold the house together. This is the doorbell. These canals around the city they would supply water towards little neighborhoods and then the people would come to these ponds get water for their house for bathing and for cooking and so on just like with the other cities in Uzbekistan look at the cars all white man this school looks like from Harry Potter I mean imagine studying here this architectural wonder you must get some insights into the into the past by studying here leaving ditching school Bukhara seems more uh, conservative more religious than Karakapalstan because I can see more women wearing hijabs and covered up and there's a fortress here These are the ponds I was referring to. Obviously, they're not used for the same purposes as bef before. Here we have a mosque. You can see this type of style mostly in Bukhara and Hiva. These uh, wooden logs that hold their roof and they're carved out. And this is one piece of log, by the way. I know this because I took a guide last year. Pretty beautiful. By the way, when the logs are bent and when they're not functional anymore, they actually switch them. So and some, some of the logs are newer than the others. Here are the gates to the fort, the fortress. Directly behind the fortress, there is a prison. A prison of Bukharian times. The depth or so. These are the, the, the criminals that would steal money, they would be imprisoned in this cell and then would be held until they would pay it off. I'm not sure how exactly they paid it off if they were imprisoned. So this is how the, the judge and the court system were back in the day. This is the pencil box and here they have the stamp and also they t would take the debtors here and they would do the court proceedings. This is the example how it was before. Hmm. Judge's uh, outfit. So we have a picture of the prisoners. For this is the example of how they were walked around of the prison, and then they were walked only for one time in two months. These are the guardsmen, weapons from 18th and 19th century, original arrows. The famous story about two soldiers in the 19th century when the British were fighting the, in Afghanistan. They sent two soldiers to, to Bukhara to tell the Emir that they will not uh, wage war. But when the soldier came, the British soldier came to tell the Emir that, hey, we're not going to attack uh, the Bukharian uh, kingdom. Uh, he came on the horse instead of walking and he also did not bring gift. Which, is a, which was a sign of disrespect. The Emir did not believe him for the true reasons that he came for, so he imprisoned him and his friend was already here actually. And this is the bug pit. The only way to go down this pit, uh, this, this cell was on a rope through this little hole that would send rats, scorpions and, and bed bugs. This is a form of torture. Also, the door, there was a door here in the hallway and the airflow would be really thin so you couldn't really you couldn't breathe 
Finally, the Emir had the two British soldiers executed after three years of capture. Well, before the prison was built here, this was a cemetery. And they have one tomb left that represents that this was a cemetery. Here, the prisoners would be taken for a walk once in two months throughout top of this prison in circles. They would be walked through this labyrinth. The sad part, it's, it was only <laughs> once in two months. Unfortunately, the Emir didn't believe British soldiers that he came with a good message. But yeah, you have to always remember that. Respect the cultural and the traditional rules. Do not come with a horse. You come walking, you come with a gift. That was the protocol back in the day. And these soldiers were culturally uneducated and when you don't have respect there's consequences <laughs> So behind me, you can see the minaret, which was used as the place for call to prayer, for the city to come pray. And it still actually functions as one. But during the Genghis Khan time, when he attacked in the 14th century, I believe, the city, the Bukharian kingdom, he came here and he stood at the bottom of the minaret, right here. And then he looked up all the way to the top and then his hat fell off. And then he said, leave it. He spared it from destruction. And then it served as the observatory for astrologers for studying stars in the sky. And also it served as the execution tower. Before 1920s, they would take prisoners and drop them from the top of the tower to the bottom. And the last execution was in 1920s. And that was during the Russian Revolution. And the tower is 48 meters high. So no matter what, when you've been thrown from the top, you'll be pretty much dead. I mean, there was no way of surviving this. And every layer over here has different design. You see, they have little stars, then this next one. And it goes all the way up. It's really impressive feat. The minaret was the first construction. And then several years there, they built the mosque. And then they built the Mas Misrade, which is a where the Muslims will study religion. <laughs> now we will visit the mosque. In Midrasa, the people, the students live there, also learn and pray at the same time. But they also always, for some reason, build the Midrasa and also the mosque next to it. Oh, that's a sick picture. Another trading dome, a little bigger one. Much bigger, actually. It's a 12th century mosque. This is the main square of the city, the main pond that used to serve as the place for the locals to come bring, get water for their home, for bathing and for meetings. But as you can see, there's a lot of elderly ladies that are dressed in uh, traditional costumes. They're actually from the provinces and the regions from all over Uzbekistan. So they are brought here to see this national marks, the monuments, of course, religious uh, spots like mosques and uh, midrasse. 
So it's quite nice of the government to do such a program for less advantaged people to see their country. I'm going to the hammam, get some detox mode. So welcome to the Hammam of Bukhara, which is built in 16th century. I'll explain to you how this ritual works and what are the steps to going to a Hammam. I'm already hot after five minutes being in here. Very cool. So the first part, when you come into the Hammam, you go to this room and you get this steam coming from this pipe and you sit here for about 30 minutes after the 30 minutes are done you go out so you lay down here in the middle then he starts doing massage on you and cleaning at the same time with soap and some herbs after that's done you sit down on the side and then he does like a neck stretch and some other stretches on you after that's done you go to this room so the massage takes about 15 minutes. They put some ginger herbs on you and then, then you spend 10 minutes here and this is heated from the floor. The heat comes from the floor, not from the pipe over there. So this is much hotter room. After all that's done, you come to the last room where you cool down for temperature adjustment. You clean up and then you go outside for to drink some green tea. this rooftop restaurant all alone I will end this video here uh, it was a great adventure in Bukhara Nukus and Muinak uh, I hope you guys liked it check out the previous videos where I was in Necropolis and the um, Tower of Silence which was a Zoroastrian mountain where they put dead bodies on top of a mountain and let the birds eat it that was an interesting place and yeah see you till next time Hello, <laughs>